Hey everybody, this is Pam Coey and welcome to my studio. It's great to have you. These three paintings are 36 by 36 inches and they are mixed media acrylic. And what I want to explain to you is that uh, due to the technology of recording videos, I can't always capture every single thing I do. And so let me just share my screen. And I wanted to just talk about where I kind of left off with that part one video. Um, which was all about, you know, this painting right here. After I got to this point in this painting, which had collage material, it had some spontaneous mark making, and, you know, I, I felt like I really moved it forward. I just want to show you like the few things I did, which were not documented. So I'm just going to walk you through that real fast. So this shows you how I completed uh, this painting number one. And so first of all, you can see that my love of text and numbers is something that I did in the upper right hand corner. And I will kind of talk more about that process in painting number two, which I was able to record. That was the main thing I did um, on one particular day. Like I felt like that really moved the painting forward. Um, on a following day, I decided to get out my really huge number two, uh, flipped it upside down and I did paint that in. But I also then, after it dried, I came back with some sandpaper to distress it so it didn't stand out like a sore thumb. And then I want to show you how I finished this painting because it's now finished. And while you may see it kind of in earlier stages in future videos, just know that I'm kind of fast forwarding painting number one because I didn't capture all the video on how I created it. So I have to just kind of walk you through it, but I want you to know that I did finish it and here it is. So the other thing I did was after I did these numbers and letters in the upper right hand corner, numbers that are huge in the lower left corner, and now I added the number one and that's collage. And I added another large letter here, this letter N backwards. And then I also love grids. And so what I did on the top edge is I did add like this grid of blocks of color. I repeated it further down just below center. And, you know, just those final touches. And it's now hanging in a gallery. It's, it's at the Art Spirit Gallery in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So now what I'm gonna be doing is talking about painting number two. Due to technical difficulties, again, I lost several hours of what I was doing to move that painting forward. But as you remember what I did in the painting one, where it turned into a catastrophe, just know that painting number two pretty much went through the very same process and ended up uh, in what would feel like, you know, kind of a catastrophe, but I tend to like that. I tend to like that challenge because it pushes me to think about, well, what is it that I really love? And it helps me to push the painting forward. If you like this type of content, please like, comment, and please share the video uh, with your friends if you like the content. And that encourages me to share a whole lot more. So here we go with painting number two. I hope you enjoy it. Again, these are my three 36 by 36 inch panels. I've got a long way to go. I start with the kitchen sink approach, which is what I look at play as. And so um, right now, what I have done is I gave it a little bit of thought, even though, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in, I, I did play here. And because I don't have so much time to play around with play, I'm kind of moving into explore right now. What I did was I I uh, broke this piece up into six inch bands. So six, 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 all the way over to 36. And in that this band here, I transferred with carbon tracing paper. I'll show you what I transferred. Because you can't see it, but um, essentially this is what I was working on is my idea. You can see it has letters on it from my lexicon series, but they overlap and you can't always tell what the letters are, especially by the time, um, imagine this is six inches, but the next six inches will be totally unrelated. So what I did was I just put this um, over my painting and I used carbon transfer paper to move from uh, this drawing paper onto my panel. So now, although you can't see it, I can see, you know, it's kind of the outlines of exactly what's on here. So what I'm gonna do now is paint that first six inch band and uh, see how it goes. The dark area up here, I had to use white uh, Sorrel transfer paper because the black carbon wouldn't show. 
but here I used black carbon here. Okay. But um, up here, because it was so dark, the black carbon wouldn't have shown up. So I had to switch over to white Sorrel transfer paper, but I can see it and that's good. Now I have some old, I'm just gonna use gray because right now I don't know what value these letters are gonna be. They could be light, they could be dark, they could be mid-tone. It really doesn't matter. All I'm trying to do right now is move the painting forward and I'm, I'm moving it forward by using shapes that I really like. So I have this gray and it's, it's kind of been in this tub for a long time, but you can see it's still good. And this is a Liquitex gesso container. I just put a gray, very mid-tone gray in there. So I'm gonna use that. All right, so I'm just coming in with the gray and um, I'm not, I don't have to be too exact. I'm trying to, I've got all these lines on here and there's a lot of rectilinear because I have letters. Like this was part of a letter B, I'm pretty sure. But some of the letters are cut off, so sometimes it's hard to tell. Now, I'm not using my painter's edge. I, I probably would normally do that, but right now, um, again, I'm, I'm not, it doesn't have to be super exact. I'm trying to change the value right now in, in some other way. Just, well, I'm trying to use the value that I can see. And gray right now is a lighter, so it's a mid-tone, it's a mid-tone gray. But the point is that uh, the color is so different from everything behind it. There's very little gray in this painting, so the gray will really stand out. And it is mid-tone, so I shouldn't say I'm changing the value because I'm really not. I'm really just changing the color and going totally desaturated. Now these shapes are big because the panel is 36 by 36, so um, I have been working on some smaller 12 by 12s, and what I realized, because like this is one that's in progress right now that I was working on over the weekend, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it, but it's not done yet, but here it is. And um, what I realize is that like, if this were a 36 by 36 inch panel, then um, like for instance, this, this green letter D here is like, it's almost the entire length of the board. So if this were 36 by 36, that's how large I'd have to scale up. I'm not sure I want to do that, but I'm just saying that it, it made me realize how much I have to scale everything up. But instead of doing that, I decided to break this painting into rows and this idea kind of just popped into my head. And so whenever that happens, um, I just started to move on that idea. And I don't really know how much I'll like it, but I, I just know that no matter what happens, I can, I can probably make it so that I will really like it. I just have to keep working at it and that's okay. Now this B butts up with an E and I could change the value, but um, I guess I probably will do that at this point just because um, I'm trying to keep, I, I want the shapes, I want the hybridized shapes of one letter butting up against to another, but whether I just use the very same gray and pass on into this, I guess I could do that as well. Maybe I'll stick with one color. I will just do that. So just making quick decisions here and using my gray. Now this turns into an E. I can just see that it's cut off. It's not the whole letter, but I'm just going to transition into this next letter. Not worry about changing the color or the value or anything else. Because my first job here is just to see if I like this direction I'm going to be taking here. And I, I think I will. And, and the reason why I think I will is because whenever I superimpose something that is order on top of chaos, um, the first thing it does is it definitely does move the painting forward. And I have to stand back and see exactly what I'm doing here. Okay. So here's where like I'm going to lose. You're not going to really know this is the B because it's merging with the letter B below it. And that's what I like. By butting up these portions of letters made from stencils, um, it's not going to be as literal as it could be. So now it's like, well, what is that shape? It's just a very unusual hybridized shape. And that's what I, I really enjoy that. But so what I, what I like about the stencils and using letters and here in this next stage right now is that because I'm superimposing something planned over something that isn't planned, I don't have to make any decisions. And in that way, it's, it is explored, but it's also kind of a playful way to 
um, to do explore even in this, um, this stage because I don't have to say, well, oh shoot, I, I love what I just covered up. It's gonna get covered up because that's what these stencils are telling me to do. I have to stand back and sometimes figure out what letter I'm going over. And I may actually have to come back and get, like I think that might, oh, this is the E, right. Even with the carbon transfer, I, I can lose track here very easily. If you guys are joining me, maybe you're painting as well. I'd love to know what you're working on. And as I do this, I might have like each row. Again, this is a row. This is a six inch row coming straight down like this. This was the top, not that there is a top, there is no top, but this is the orientation. I had it uh, with this being the top when I first painted it and now it's on its side so that I can just easily record what I'm doing on this portion here. All right, so I'm, I'm giving this thing order and I'm liking it because I still see the randomness in these pockets here between these hybridized letters. The, the letters are not obvious. I mean, if you look hard enough, you can kind of tell what they are, but, but they're not all that way. Now this gray over this light purple is so close in value that you can barely even see the gray. It's a piece of collage paper here. really quieted down this whole band and I'm, I'm, I think I am liking this. So I'm going to leave now and work on uh, drawing out the next band and the next band. And I'm just going to progress through this entire painting. Thanks for joining me, guys. Bye now.